Hey y'all, welcome back and welcome to our post geometry unit where we're going to talk a bunch about factoring. So some of this should be maybe a review from Algebra 1 and it'll kickstart you into uh, whichever course you're taking next year. Factoring is going to be an important thing for you to know how to do. So even if you forget a little bit of this over the summer, it's a good refresher and maybe it'll uh, be a little bit easier for you next year when you see it. So we'll start here. Uh, with just a refresher of the distributive property, something we've used a little bit this year, but probably not as much as uh, we would have liked to if we want to be ready for next year. So I have here a one-term polynomial, which actually we would call a monomial because it has one term, and I'm multiplying it by this three-term polynomial. And this is an example of the distributive property because I'm going to multiply this negative 4y squared. I'm going to multiply it by every term inside the parentheses. So each piece of this polynomial gets multiplied by negative 4y squared. So let's show that. So each term is getting multiplied by negative 4y squared. So now we need to simplify and actually do the multiplication. Now, a quick refresher. If I have variables that have exponents and the variable is the same, so the base is the same, all I need to do when I'm multiplying is add the two exponents. So first I'll multiply 5 times negative 4 to get negative 20. And then y to the 4th times y squared is just y, and then 4 plus 2 gives us 6. Negative 3 times negative 4 gives us positive 12. y squared times y squared gives us y to the 4th. 2 times negative 4 gives us negative 8. And y squared stays the same because the 2 did not have any y's attached to it. So after the... <clears throat> Excuse me, after distributing, that's what we get. So this monomial times this polynomial gives us a three-term polynomial. Negative 20y to the sixth plus 12y to the fourth minus 8y squared. So I have three practice problems for you to do. I need to shrink them down in size so you can see them. So go ahead and pause here. Try these three distributive property practices and then go ahead and press play and check your answers. So here I'm multiplying everything in parentheses by 4b. So 5b squared times 4b plus b times 4b plus 6 times 4b. And I end up with 20b cubed or b to the third plus 4b squared plus 24b. And remember here, if there's no exponent shown, the exponent is a 1. So that's how I got b squared. b to the first times b to the first is b to the second. So same idea here. Everything in here gets multiplied by negative 7h. So you should have gotten negative 21h to the third plus 56h squared plus 7h. Here everything gets multiplied by 2x. So 2x times x squared gives us 2x to the third. 2x times negative 6 gives us negative 12x squared. And 2x times 5 gives us 10x. Okay, so the reason we went over to the distributive property is because we want to start factoring things. So factors are numbers or in this case 
monomials or polynomials that got multiplied together to give us a polynomial. So I'm going to go back here and we'll just use number 3 in, as an example. 2x and x squared minus 6x plus 5 when multiplied together gives us this trinomial 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 10x. So that means that each of these things 2x and x squared minus 6x plus 5 these two things are factors. Same thing up here. It's negative 7h and 3h squared minus h, 8h minus 1. Those are two factors of this polynomial. So when we factor a polynomial, we're doing sort of the opposite of the distributive property. We're trying to pull out what it is we distributed in the first place. And one way to do that is to find a greatest common factor. So I'm going to find which number I can divide each of these by without anything left over, without any sort of remainder or decimal. So since we have numbers and variables, I'll start with the numbers first. I look at 3, 12, and 15. And the biggest number I can divide each of those by is 3. Now I'll look at the variables, x cubed, x squared, and x. Pretty much all I have to do is find uh, the smallest one, x to the first. x to the first can be divided by x to the first, and so can each of these. So the greatest common factor of x, x squared, and x cubed is just x. So that means 3x is the greatest common factor. So 3x is one of the factors of this original polynomial. So 3x is the greatest common factor. If I want to figure out the other factor, the thing that I multiplied 3x by to get that polynomial, all I have to do is do this division here that I have represented. So the 3's here go away. Dividing two like variables that have exponents, all I do is subtract the top one minus the bottom one. So x cubed divided by x is x squared. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. x squared divided by x is just x. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And those two x's cancel. So again, 3x is my greatest common factor. And 3x times x squared minus 4x plus 5 is my polynomial factored using the greatest common factor. So again, I have three examples, and I'll have to shrink these down again. So I want you to pause here, try to find the factors of each of these three polynomials. So number one, the number that I can divide by that's biggest is 4, and the variable is x. So 4x is my GCF, my greatest common factor, and I can continue factoring by dividing each of these by 4x. So 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2, x squared divided by x is x, negative 12 divided by 4 is 3, and those x's cancel, and that is my polynomial factor. Here the GCF. is 5d. So my factorization is 5d times d squared plus 2. Again, I just divided 5d cubed and 10d by 5d. 
And then the last one, my GCF. is 6 for my number and m for my variable portion. So the factorization is 6m times 6m cubed divided by 6m is just m squared minus 2m minus 4. Sorry about that. So the easy way to check that you factored a polynomial correctly, especially using this method, is to just go back and redistribute like we did on the first couple slides. So I could multiply 6m times this polynomial, and it should give me this original polynomial. Same thing up here and up here. So there is a method to check. You don't have to check, but if you're not sure you did it right, it's a good way to check. And it's kind of quick. So as in the past, we have some U-tries. There's two U-tries. I want you to do the distributive property in number one. And I want you to find the greatest common factor in number two. And write the polynomial factored. So you should have two things multiplied together. Remember, for number two, if you want to check your answer, you can always use the distributive property. And you should get the original polynomial. We'll check those in class, and I'll answer questions. Good luck.